Good morning. Good morning. So a little bit latchy, jumping on um, live this morning. Um, had a escaped pony, a couple of things that I forgot to do yesterday um, that I then did this morning and then um, felt a little bit marginally overwhelmed. So I went and had a bath. So <laughs> apologies, busy, apologies for um, running late. So thank you for joining us this morning. And today we thought um, we would maybe have a look at motivation. Good morning, John. So I'll maybe shift these closer together. Um, and the other thing was I removed Facebook from my phone. Um, so, oh no, am I on the wrong page? On Instagram. Good morning. On Instagram, just a quick question. Am I on the sanctuary or am I on spirit and soul? Good morning, Melissa. I think I may be on the wrong page. Um, oh, well, I can save and upload. So apologies if you're on Instagram. I think I might be on the wrong, um, <laughs> wrong channel. So I deleted yeah. Facebook from my phone, basically. It was, uh, oh, I am on spirit and soul. Yay, awesome, cool. Right, go. Um, so yeah, so we thought today we would have a chat about um, motivation and, um, you know, what motivation is, how we can harness it um, and things that we do to um, motivate ourselves. Um, and yeah, but like, like usual, any questions, fight away as we go through it or any themes that you wish us to cover, fight away. We're open book. Um, and thanks so much last week for all your um, communications. Hi, Tina. Um, all your communications last week with regards to being alcohol free. So that was a really interesting chat. Um, and it's incredible actually to see how many people are moving that way um to creating a more a more high vibe high vibe life Definitely. um and more motivated and more motivated exactly yeah. exactly so Stu, what kind of things motivate you um well as usual susie asked me the question uh, like last night and this morning what we were talking about and as usual i said well what do you think <laughs> um sort of chucking it back to her but I think that when we, when we talked about motivation, it was about, got me kind of thinking that it's the time of year where, um, you know, the nights are drawing in, uh, it's getting a bit darker, um, it's getting a bit chillier and so forth, and sometimes we feel it kind of crowding in uh, on us. So it kind of got me thinking to kind of, you know, what is motivation, uh, in, in our view anyway, uh, as, a, as a couple and as people. Um, and it's that, it's the urge... To behave or act in a certain way to kind of satisfy certain things like desires, goals, um, wishes, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, so really, uh, you know, in all my years uh, of training and teaching and lecturing and stuff, I've become aware um, of what the psychologists have always said that motivation is an internal thing; it comes from within, uh, but it can be influenced by external factors. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was really just to have a uh, the usual. Um, a husband wife banter uh, <laughs> about motivation what I think motivates Susie and what she thinks motivates me is not always the same good morning um, Arlene on but Insta in terms of um, you know how we get the most out of it for ourselves and for our family and for the life that we've carved out and that we lead um, uh, it's different for everybody Mm -hmm. uh, and that's the thing to remember, that it is different for you, it's different for me, it's different for Susie, everybody. Um, but the word motivation, um, it will mean different things to different people, but it's the same word. So it's about, you know, figuring it out, finding out what is it that actually kind of gets you out of bed in the morning. Yeah. Uh, what makes you feel good about, uh, you know, the behaviours and activities you've actually done. So really, uh, you know, for, for me... Mm -hmm. Um, you know, having a purpose, um, having a goal, uh, these are motivators. Uh, I mean, I've lived my life through uh, reading loads of different books on uh, sort of motivation, self-development. Uh, you know, I've listened to loads of people uh, from sort of Zig Ziglar, um, 
Charlie Tremendous Jones, uh, Dale Carnegie, Tony Robbins and all that kind of stuff. But what it, it tells me is that they don't motivate me, uh, but they do inspire me to be motivated. Mm -hmm. um, so it's about what does it for you? Uh, and that's what would be an interesting kind of chat about. I think uh, one of the uh, things uh, that I was thinking about today about motivation and Arlene over on Instagram um, is like queen of motivation and um, personal training and stuff is that people often miss the fact about nutrition, mm -hmm. about being hydrated, about, um, you know, being in that right vibration. So if we are like when we're eating crap food and, you know, you're eating loads of junk, then it's really difficult to get that motivation. It doesn't matter, like, sometimes how much you want to do something. If you don't have the energy or you're not in the right vibration to achieve it, yep. then point. that can um, be difficult. And you mentioned Tony Robbins there and, like, he's obviously, <laughs> like, motivation master, like, the cult of motivation. And, um, you know, that's something that he is huge on is like really firing up nutritionally, energetically, obviously your mindset, like fueling, um, empowering up the motivation. But um, 100% you can, if you eat shite. You feel like white. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. You'll turn white, that's for sure. <laughs> Yeah, so you know, when we're eating high vibe food and when we are like leading a higher vibration lifestyle, whether that is just getting outside, connecting, and all that, then you know, that can really, really be an important thing because, um, you know, you mentioned goals and things, and that's something I work a lot with clients with is yeah. like helping them to achieve their goals and motivate themselves, empower themselves. But ultimately, for me, I think you need to know why you're doing something. Yeah, your purpose, mm -hmm. your purpose, your why, definitely. That's uh, that's a huge thing uh, that we've uh, come to discover is that, uh, you know, what's your why? Um, in many areas, in different parts of businesses that we've been involved in together, businesses we've been in separately, mm -hmm. uh, and just in living life itself. Um, and I, I can give you a really basic example that um, I know my motivation level changes when I know that tomorrow morning I'm going golfing. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Stuart so, so. really struggles to get up in the morning. Sometimes. However, if it's a golf day, he could get up at like four o'clock in the morning, five o'clock in the morning, literally bounce out of bed. So therefore, <laughs> your purpose, your goal, will impact the impulses that you have mm -hmm. to get something achieved. It's as simple as that. I mean, it's impulses that optimise the well-being that we have um, to try and minimise the kind of physical difficulties and pains that we've got uh, and maximise the pleasures. Uh, that's what we're all pursuing at the end of the day. Uh, yes, we have down times and we've got, uh, you know, moods and so forth. Uh, that's just human nature. Um, what I think is crucial about that is, um, you know, how you respond to them, how you deal with them, how you... Mm -hmm. And I think it's those times, actually, like, yeah, as you say, like accepting the down times mm -hmm. and the hard times, but looking for the inspiration around you so you don't get stuck. So yeah. for me, I do a lot. And like when I was ill, um, like a number of years ago and was in bed, like I used to listen to inspiring things. Good morning, Nick. Listen to inspiring things. Use affirmations to help motivate myself. So try and create that positive internal dialogue in my brain because what my brain was telling me was that I couldn't do things and I was rubbish at things and I was a horrible person and blah, 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 all this stuff going round and round and round. Um, so I, you know, you're mentioned motivation comes internally. I suppose my motivation in the end did come internally, but I mm -hmm. had to use a lot of external forces. Yes, of course. Of course. To support me in creating that mindset and creating um that positive space so if you aren't feeling motivated i think it's okay to seek external support yes. whether that is you know listening to empowering podcasts mm -hmm. reaching out you know i mentioned obviously Sweet arlene somebody. there who's a pt so you know if that was one of your goals and you're struggling with motivation get that accountability like we're today like tuesday's our day off together today we're going to be doing a bit of studying later together 
So like having that accountability, like the other person to hold you responsible can be really, really powerful as well. Very much so. And we talk, you, you know, in terms of the internal, external, um, it, it is both. Um, but the motivation definitely comes from you um, because there's information that we all get hit with, uh, the same information, but we all see it or hear it or respond to it differently, um, which is what, you know, uh, makes us uh, all human beings and interesting people uh, to, to be around and stuff like that. Uh, but it's like Susan was saying, you know, I think that we, in terms of motivation from externally, it's like it, it's like investigating what's available. Um, mm -hmm. It's uh, that it helps you stimulate, um, you know, and conjure up feelings that make you want to be a sort of, uh, you know, get up and go, and then that will ultimately make you motivated. Mm -hmm. And being mm -hmm. around people who maybe have similar goals or similar values, and it's okay to recognise that that people might not be your family. <laughs> Um, mm -hmm. I can't remember who I was having this conversation with recently, but you know, or, or, or even your immediate friends, you know, your friends might have different goals and values from you and that's great. They're still your friends, but equally, like if you are trying to lose weight, for example, and you and your friends go out and munch all the time, then you might want to like find somebody else to do some other activities with or suggest other activities or think of some other examples. I'll even like. Well, it, you know, people can suggest things that you never thought about because you're not in the right place to think about them. Yeah. Uh, you know them, but you're, you're just not in the right sort of mental state to kind of think about them. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what people do is they will prod you, they will um, you know, stimulate you, um, they will try and get you to think. Uh, and then that's then when juices start developing again and you find you're re-inspiring, you're motivated and so forth. Yeah. Just but seeing they, another... I, one, of the diff one of the things that I had real difficult with uh, for years, it uh, was, I can't afford to feel unmotivated. I can't feel negative. I can't feel unhappy. I can't feel ill. I can't feel, I can't feel, you know, I can't feel. Um, but, you know, full-time positivity just doesn't exist. Um, it, it overlooks underlying, um, you know, issues that people actually have. Um, and I, I, I listened to a podcast uh, with uh, Simon Sinek, uh, and he was talking about, uh, you know, the difference between being positive and uh, and being fair to yourself, um, and being um, okay with not feeling okay, and accepting yeah. it. And that's one thing I've worked really hard at, uh, and now I'm actually very comfortable with not being okay because I'm like that most days. So. <laughs> I can't be inspired at times. Um, no, so I think like, yeah, I totally agree with what you're saying. Like all emotions are valid. Mm -hmm. Like it's yeah. really important to feel them all rather than suppress them. Um, and you know, to do what you need to do in order to be motivated. So I'm just thinking of examples of motivation. So like for me, when I wrote my book, I committed to getting up every morning at five o'clock in the morning to write before the house will cut because I was still working full time and doing all the things and trying to write a book and, um, you know, coping with the grief of my mom and like a multitude of different things at the time. Um, but I really had that purpose. I set myself a date. So this is another thing you could use maybe to motivate yourself, to give yourself a deadline or, um, give yourself a start line. So when am I going to start? Not just when am I going to finish? I'm a real, um, focus on the end date but what that leads to is a lot of hustling neither the mm. end um, and this month I did that differently and um, obviously with my membership um, I create all this content um, you know to go, go alive on the first day of the month and um, I basically sometimes on the last day I'm like ah, oh, try to upload stuff to YouTube and everything but this month it was more in flow it felt really good because I just gave myself a start date rather than the end date mm -hmm. um, so setting yourself a deadline setting yourself a goal can be really really useful um, accountability as we mentioned I um, think setting a goal is more than useful I think it's essential really mm -hmm. uh, to be fair you know, giving yourself, uh, you know, when you do something 
and you achieve a goal, you feel good about that. If you haven't got the goal, but you still have done the behaviour and done the thing, you know, always give, give yourself the feedback of achievement. Mm. Um, so that, you know, that goal uh, is huge. I mean, you, talk, you, you listen to all, you know, all the successful people, every one of them bar none, are all goal setters. Yeah. They all set themselves targets, they all set themselves objectives. Uh, you know, then they break them down into projects, and then that project has got itself a goal. Yeah, and then you've got the purpose towards it. Absolutely. And I think like yeah. goals don't yeah. have to be like huge monumental things. Yeah. Like previously, I used to think like a goal had to be like something really, really huge. Mm. And then I've spoken about this a few times to people about how I've I read this article one day about like oh set yourself goals, and it was like um try something new at a restaurant of your choice, and I was like that's not a goal like. What that's like embracing the new mm -hmm. for me it was like okay let's like try and I don't know book to mm -hmm. climb Kilimanjaro or like do something monumental Huge, yeah. um but goal um when I was ill for example was basically just to get up out of bed or to have a shower or to walk around my garden or you know to get that sense of achievement um John's saying that um having awareness to choose which emotions you attach to is the hard bit um absolutely and that you know you've mentioned the word attachment there and that is exactly it so um i know john that you're big on meditation and yoga and things so um i think you know it's almost changing the word attachment to awareness so having awareness of it but not getting overly attached to it because it literally is an emotion em emotion so it's about something that we're supposed to be moving through we're not supposed to be attached per se or stuck it's about moving through and and feeling and um just allowing and acceptance is a big a big big part of that maria is saying often your friends as you evolve and um, they don't relate to the new you and yeah we chatted a bit about that last week actually um in um giving up alcohol and friendship circles and and things like that but um yeah absolutely and you you will grow and you know you'll have lasting friendships that maybe you've had from childhood and they will still be incredible friendships and then you'll have new incredible friendships with people you meet along the way with the same goal and purpose and they'll dip in and dip out and you know that's mm -hmm. part of the beauty of life is meeting for me and anyway, meeting lots of interesting people and um yeah connecting creating relationships and I think you say this as a guy, like guy friendships are so different, aren't they? Yeah. Like yeah. you don't really have as many friends. Well, you're saying like, it, it's, it's, it's like a, deep it's, friends. Yeah, it's a it's a circle of, um, uh, you know, people you spend time with, mm -hmm. um, and it's not, uh, you know, showing up for friends is is important, um, absolutely, um, but equally you as that friend, people showing up for you uh, as well is equally important. Um, but you're absolutely right. Um, meeting so many different people, different walks of life, because I'm I'm a natural interviewer, um, because I've been doing it for 30 years, when I meet people, they all feel that they're being interviewed, uh, because I'm keen to kind of get to the bottom of who they are. <laughs> uh, but just, I'm really inquisitive, I'm really interested in what makes people tick. You know, mm -hmm. why does somebody get, you know, you know, a kick out of driving a Porsche where the next person gets a kick out of driving a Yamaha motorbike or uh, a, a cycle, uh, a bike, uh, you know, everybody's totally different. And that's what is such a fascinating place that we live in. Uh, but what happens is the long term relationships, uh, that's where you get the real connections and depth. depth. That's where you get the kind of partnerships. Uh, with people there's a similarity that goes deeper than just you know what you like and what you're motivated about uh, and that's I think what yeah after so 12 got... years of marriage and 14 mm. years together kind of <laughs> discovered but always still learning yeah absolutely Jennifer is saying definitely acceptance of the darkness as well as the light in yourself mm -hmm. um yeah you know it recognizing recognizing that it's all part of who we are and um there's nothing wrong with that um you know just this month actually has been a big, big or last month's a big transformational month for me in in that acceptance of um who i am and light and dark it always seems to happen because um 
September the Spirit and Soul memberships about um, authentic self and limiting beliefs. So obviously I've spent the whole month diving into that subject before and exploding it myself and doing all the work. Um, so yeah, so it's finding out what drives me. And I think like obviously you gave an analogy there of like a Porsche and a bike, like what motivates one person won't motivate the next. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a really valid thing to think about you as a person. What is it that actually motivates you? Like, is it the living in the country or is it living in a fast paced city or is it, you know, well, we've decided obviously to work four day week, although I do work weekends sometimes, but you know, it's like, you know, what is it that motivates you? So to me, the time for us to have this time together on a Tuesday was more important than the money I could generate from working a Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's working out what your driver is for you and that's what will motivate you. Like not, um, Michelle, I struggle with goal setting as I tend to be over ambitious and therefore struggle to reach goals. One thing um, about goals is that uh, they're never set in stone. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they're flexible. You have to make them flexible because goals can equally be, um, you know, a trigger for you feeling... The, like you're just saying there, that if you don't achieve them, you may feel that you failed. Yeah. Uh, and that's not what goals are all about. They're just there to set a direction and a route for you to take, for you to develop the behaviours to achieve something. Um, and as Susie says, uh, you know, it could be little things. Uh, I mean, you can, you can break goals down. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what I was going to jump in. You know, <laughs> a, a big goal is a multitude of smaller goals. Mm -hmm. And the achievement of the smaller goals, the big goal gets achieved. You can't just jump from here to there. You have to actually take the journey. And your goals can be hourly, daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, yearly. Yeah. And it's about recognising that. Um, and patting yourself on the back along the way, not just at the end. Um, yeah. Because that's one thing, I, I'm with you on that, uh, Michelle, that, you know, I used to think years and years ago about, you know, goals were... Uh, too debilitating, too controlling, um, until I realised that uh, quite the opposite was true. Um, yeah, and I think, like Michelle, you're saying, as Stuart said, like break it, break it down. So whatever that big goal is, and you can reach out to me after if you want, drop us a message or something, and we can help you break it down if you're struggling. Um, but you know, breaking down the goal, and I do this a lot with coaching clients, whereby say the goal is like obviously it's coronavirus time. I have like a client who wants to travel and do all these things, and and that's really not like actually possible just now to do the things that they want to do. So I'm like, okay, well let's break it down. Let's make it smaller. Let's you know go online and pick some destinations. Research those destinations. What's going on? You know, we can you can begin to start a process. You know whether that is like we're starting a new course today. So whether that is, okay, today, let's say we just do half an hour. Yeah, rather than thinking, oh my gosh, I've got this whole course to do. Um, and you know, it's the same with any kind of work goals or writing the book, for example. So writing the book literally was, okay, I'm gonna sit down for 20 minutes today and just start and see if anything happens, yeah? So break it down, the thought of writing a whole book would like, blow my mind and did frequently so I had kept having to pull myself back to these smaller steps along um along the way Nicola's saying she's just listened to the interview with Kira in the membership and she's so excited for this month's content ace I I honestly um I was nearly crying doing that interview with Kira so Kira um uh, McCadden owns and runs redesign your vibe um you can find her on Instagram and um Facebook and she is doing a master class in my membership this month on limiting beliefs. And she's just, she's awesome. So much fun. And um, yeah, she's one, one clever cookie who's really been through, been through a lot. Um, so yeah, so motivating, being around inspiring people. What else? I, th um, I dealt with a client a while back um, on the coaching side and um, <clears throat> They were saying that, uh, you know, I'm there for my team. I always put my team first. I always put them first and them first. And, and I asked the question, I said, so do you believe that you are giving the best of you to that team or that person? Um, 
because they weren't looking after themselves. Um, mm. they, they weren't, you know, their behaviours weren't, you know, hugely great. Um, they didn't seem overly motivated. Uh, and we got to the point that when they recognised that when they become the best of themselves, they give that best person to other people, uh, which is an internal thing. And that's what I discovered uh, years ago as well, is that if I can get me, uh, you know, healthy, if I can get me encouraged, if I can get me inspired, or if I, if I can be motivated, that's what I give to other people around about me. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, wife, kids, friends, uh, people that you meet, colleagues, etc. Yeah. So that is very, a hugely internal thing. Yeah. And I think there's like a mirror, there's a reflection. Mm -hmm. So like, if you are... In and around people who are motivated, you will feel more motivated. Likewise, like if you come into a room and you're like feeling upbeat and positive and inspired, then the next person is going to feel that from you as well. So, yeah, doing the best for yourself. Um, Tina saying on Instagram, she loved my interview with Kira. Um, thank you. Um, so yeah, I did an interview with Kira on her page on Instagram. You can find that in her Insta stories. She does. Um, shift talks every Tuesday I think it is um, on Instagram so there's lots of interesting people being interviewed over there um, so yeah I think you know eat well get your head in the right place mm -hmm. decide why you want to do something and check in like so here's another thing so often people and I see this a lot with clients um, <coughs> will have a goal and they're not reaching it and when we break it down, it's actually because they're not actually that bothered about achieving it. It might have been something they had um, that they wanted to do like mm -hmm. 10 years ago or something they feel they should be doing. And that's a big word, should. So, you know, um, and this is one I'm working through myself this month, like creating my own um process and way I want to structure my business but you know there's things in life you think oh I should be doing this or I should really be reaching for that goal or um oh I should really think of an example of what you should like you be aspiring to in some mm -hmm. people's eyes like oh, having a big house for example mm -hmm. yeah so the big house the nice car the like and all that's great like that is totally great if that is what genuinely inspires you but sometimes when you break it down or you know um the ambitious job for example you know see it with like clients who are like maybe wanting to go thinking they should be going for a promotion and they should be doing this and they should be doing that <laughs> louisa you're hilarious <laughs> i know somebody who can help you <laughs> louisa's saying on facebook i should be doing my taxes help yeah go get help get support farm it out <laughs> get yourself a bookkeeper um honestly like the investment in getting a bookkeeper is like awesome if you need the support and it's not something you enjoy doing and you could be doing something more inspiring like yoga because you're awesome at it then kick the taxes to the curb get somebody else indeed. to do it indeed um so sure. yeah so you know it's working out if that's motive like if you keep procrastinating on something, is it because you're scared or is it because you don't really want to do it? Well, I think the second one in some respects, because if you really wanted to, you would. Simple as that. If you really wanted to yeah. achieve what you're setting out, then you will actually do what you can and do whatever it takes mm -hmm. uh, uh, to work towards that. Um, yeah. but, you know, uh, you, you, you know, you could be here for hours discussing this topic. It's it's so fascinating. <laughs> Louisa's already yeah. going to get a bookkeeper. Ace, if you need a number, I know a very good one. Um, so, yeah. And Susie's right about the source of stuff. Um, the source of something that you believe to be the reason for not achieving something or feeling, you know, uh, that you're not getting anywhere or that you can't get motivated or inspired and stuff like that. Uh, a very quick example... Uh, years ago, our training company, we went to a company because they, they asked, can you come and give us some crisis management training to the staff because, uh, you know, they're sort of demotivated and um, they're unhappy and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so as usual, we went across and did our investigation. 
Uh, and what we discovered was that, you know, crisis management is not what they needed. What they needed was communication. Mm -hmm. They were not communicating effectively to their staff, so therefore their staff were uncertain about what was going on, who was doing what, and then therefore they got edgy, and then they started being demotivated because they didn't know what they were supposed to be doing. No goal, no direction, no purpose. Mm -hmm. So we did a three-day course of communication, uh, and the client, you know, six months later, uh, came back with part of evaluations uh, to say that it was one of the best training identifiers that they'd ever experienced in the history of their company. Uh, and that was because it was something else that, than what they thought mm -hmm. uh, was the source of the problem. So I think that's a great point. Like, yeah, maybe having a look at why you're not feeling motivated. Is it diet? Is it the fact that you don't know where you're going? Like, if you feel like you're going around in circles, like, take time to step off that hamster wheel and figure out, well, what do I really want? And if you don't know, chat it through with a friend, chat it through with a coach, um, you know, meditate. <laughs> uh, you know, seek, seek someone to have those conversations with if you're struggling with it in your own head. And likewise for the accountability. So we went to Tony Robbins last year. Um, was that last year? Mm -hmm. um, we went to see Tony Robbins last year. And uh, I wrote this list and I've got this book from Tony Robbins and stuff of all these things that I was wanting to achieve and, and all those things. And uh, I hadn't looked at the book again until a couple of months ago. One of my friends who was also there had said to me, oh, have you actually ever looked back at that workbook? And I was like, no, I actually haven't. And interestingly, when I went back, I had achieved all the things that I had written down. Um, but it gave me that direction. It gave me that plan of, Okay, this is where I'm going. And once you write it down and get clear, you can start taking those steps, even if it's tiny steps. Oh, I know where I was going with this. I lost track there. Um, so one of the things on my list was physical health. So I'm a huge mental health advocate, huge um, spiritual health advocate. And the, la the final piece of the pie or whatever, <laughs> good analogy from the foodie. And the final piece of the pie was basically, um, you know, for me, taking control of my physical health. Um, I constantly, every time I tried to exercise, I would injure myself. And I had this belief in my head that like, oh, well, there's like no point. Every time you do it, you injure yourself. Just just do yoga. That's it. Um, but actually, I did the opposite to challenge that belief. And I hired a boxer to train with and thought if there's any sport that I can do that I'm likely to get injured in, it's going to be boxing. Mm -hmm. So um, I started training um, with a boxer and I absolutely love it. It has helped me overcome that belief that I'm not physically strong or whatever. And um, it gave me that accountability. So I do that weekly. I made that commitment to myself. I have stuck to that for over a year um, and because it makes me feel good and it makes me feel strong. And um, Maria over on Instagram saying taking a rest or a step back is sometimes super helpful. And absolutely, you know, um, that's what I did. That's why I went and had a bath this morning because I was feeling like a little bit overwhelmed. Um, and I just thought, yeah, I'm just going to go have a bath. Um, mm -hmm. Susie gets so busy. Not that I don't. But Susie gets so busy that she has to set a goal to have time <laughs> off. <laughs> that's and I'm not being, true. and I'm not joking either. Yeah, but that's but what drives me. That though. It's, absolutely, and that's the whole point. Is what we're discussing. It's, yeah, it's what does it for you. Uh, other people have time off all the time, um, and uh, you know, having a lack of purpose, they can, you, know, you can see in them their how they harm themselves, etc., etc. So mm -hmm. uh, it is absolutely fine with that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I love that because that's like my sense of achievement, like yeah. my little self-care yeah. to-do list. Like I'm going to spend time with my horses and I'm going to have a bath and I'm going to do those things. And um, mm -hmm. that's what makes me feel good. I love I love um, being in nature, doing those things as well. So, yeah. yeah. Um, Nicola's saying when I can have a day with no sugar and alcohol, she wakens up feeling fresh and motivated the next day example of what you talked about yeah definitely what we put in is what we get out um maria i'm here with you on the limiting beliefs and injuring self must get back to running so yeah so it's running for me maria 
I injure myself running and my friend is uh, like the most incredible sports and remedial massage therapist and um, she tells me to walk, not run. <laughs> walk, do the other stuff. Um, I think mm -hmm. it's been a horse rider. My hamstrings are like so tight. Mm -hmm. um, so the yoga is really good. Pilates, I've started Pilates now as well. Um, and Louisa, if you're still here, I was going to do a post. I did your... Um, one of your classes that was free. Um, I did a beautiful yin yoga that um, Louisa had on her page, Louisa Mackay, field yoga. Um, I did that the other day, it was so good. So, yeah. Um, so, anybody got any questions yeah. before we wrap up for the day and before we get into, we're highly motivated today because we're going to go and see an architect about de designs about our house. So that's like really exciting and motivating and it's also our day off, which is quite exciting. Um, mm -hmm. how, are you, sunny. how are you feeling about um, studying? Motivated? <coughs> highly. Are you? <coughs> <coughs> yep. <laughs> Can't wait to do it. Um, I, on the other hand, am not feeling highly motivated about studying today, so I can bounce off Stuart's energy right. um, and do sure. that. Accept it, take it. <laughs> Bro, so if anybody has any questions, um, thanks, Louisa. Um, Tina over on Instagram saying that she loves yin yoga as well. Um, Happy I was able to be here. Yeah, so congratulations to Nicola, who has made a very brave step and motivated to step into her coaching and Reiki career and wild wellness walk. So if you're looking um, to kind of spend some time in nature, get some support, um, Nicola is your gal. So yeah, check out with check out with her. Bye, Maria. Um, so yeah, have a great, great week. <laughs> yeah, it's you can do it. You can do it, um, Michelle. Thank oh, thank you, Michelle. Um, so yeah, we'll be back next week. Yeah. Let us know if there's anything you want us to speak about, anything that you're struggling with just now, would like support with. Um, we are here, and um, yeah, awesome to hang out with you this morning. And yeah. we'll go and get our studies done. And have a great day and a great week. <laughs> Alrighty. See you later. Bye. Bye.